Senator uh, from Utah. I ask unanimous consent to suspend the quorum call. Without objection. Madam President, on the morning of April 5th, 1977, a 17-year-old girl, scared, alone, and seven and a half months pregnant, set foot inside of a Los Angeles abortion clinic. She had been advised to get a saline abortion, a procedure in which an injected saline solution burns a baby inside the womb, who is then delivered dead 24 hours later. So she signed some papers, received the injection, and then waited for the poison to run its course. But the child, little Gianna Jensen, Gianna Jensen, had other ideas. Triumphantly, defiantly, and against all odds, Gianna Jensen entered this world after her own abortion. She was delivered alive in that same abortion clinic on April 6th. She should have been burned. She should have been blind. She should have been dead. And yet, at two and a half pounds, little Gianna Jessen was very much alive, albeit suffering the effects of the saline solution, which was intended to be lethal. The nurse could have left her to die that day. But mercifully, she instead decided to call an ambulance. Little Gianna was transferred to the hospital, and her life was saved. This was indeed an act of mercy. Even more importantly, it was just the beginning of Gianna's story, comprising only the first chapter of her amazing life. The saline solution that had been injected to take her life did not have its intended effect. But it starved her brain of oxygen, so she was born with cerebral palsy, which left her with physical and cognitive disabilities. Doctors said that this child, who was not supposed to live in the first place, would also never be able to lift her head, let alone walk. And yet here again, Gianna beat the odds. With help of a loving, adoptive mother, the help of a walker, and the help of some leg braces. She was walking by the time she was three years old. And by the time she was just 14 years old, she was speaking to audiences about her extraordinary birth and the exceptional life that it made possible. Now, since then, Gianna has literally run marathons and trained to climb mountains. And for years, she has traveled around the country and, in fact, around the world, speaking and marching, limping one step at a time for the unborn children who cannot. Her accomplishments, especially in light of her disabilities, are breathtaking. And yet, because of those disabilities, she was exactly the kind of baby that some would say should have been allowed to die after a botched abortion. Exactly the kind of baby that some might dismissively characterize as a burden on society. Gianna Jessen's life, Madam President, shows that she is quite the opposite of a burden on all of those who have the good fortune to know her. As she puts it, she's been blessed with the tremendous gift of cerebral palsy. She adds, I have more joy than I can ever articulate because of the obstacles I have overcome. But perhaps that is her truest and greatest achievement. For Gianna lives with the deep, authentic, and contagious joy that she spreads wherever she goes. To listen to her, to talk to her, to know her, is truly to know the joy of life. A woman fully alive, indeed. It is good that Gianna Jessen exists, Madam President. Very good, good for her, and good for all of us. Her life is not defined but what, by what she can do. It's not defined by what she cannot do, or by whether she was originally wanted. Her life is unrepeatable 
irreplaceable, and of infinite and immeasurable worth. She's made an indelible mark on the entire world, as only she could. Today, we have the chance to stand up and defend the truth that Gianna's life is, in fact, worthwhile, that all babies' lives are valuable and worth living, just like Gianna's. Women like Gianna's birth mother deserve better than what many in our society have told them. They deserve to be protected right alongside their babies. Pro-life Americans, like me, believe that children like Gianna should be protected within the womb. Both the essential moral principle of human dignity and the undisputed scientific facts of human biology insist on this very point. But the bill I'm here to discuss today does not. This bill, the, the Born Alive Abortion Survivors Protection Act, takes no position on abortion or on the rights of the unborn child. It simply says that in this country, when a child is born, even if by accident, even if the, in the most dangerous place in the world for an infant, that is a Planned Parenthood clinic, he or she becomes a citizen of the United States under our Constitution and is entitled to the full protection of our laws. Boy or girl, black or white, rich or poor. Each deserves, paraphrasing the immortal words of Abraham Lincoln, an unfettered start and a fair chance in the race of life. This is the essence of what it means to have rights and to be entitled to the equal protection of the laws. Among our inalienable rights is the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, a concept that clearly encompasses the right not to be murdered. This bill will simply reaffirm that such fundamental rights extend not simply to the rich and the powerful, but even to the furthest margins of our society, and even to the most vulnerable and newest citizens of our great nation. This legislation should not be controversial. In fact, if you think about it, What's most remarkable here is the fact that outlawing the murder of the innocent in the first moments of life, no less, is even controversial among many members of this body. Those objecting to this legislation, including the political media covering up the scandal, will say otherwise. But we know the truth. And so do they. Thank you, Madam President. I yield the floor.